¿Qué tal? Bienvenidos a una de las actividades más del encuentro del Festival de las Letras Europeas en el marco de la 35 quinta Feria Internacional del Libro eh, de Guadalajara. En esta ocasión vamos a tener el gusto de conversar con Stina Jackson. Ella es una escritora de eh, Suecia que se encuentra actualmente en Estados Unidos. Uh, tiene un par de novelas traducidas al español que han sido eh, verdaderamente muy importantes, no solamente en habla hispana, han sido traducidas en muchísimas lenguas y han sido todo un éxito en Suecia. Ella es una autora originaria de Skelefle, Skelefeta, eh, muy al norte de Suecia, esto muy cercano al círculo polar ártico. A los 22 años se trasladó a Estados Unidos, donde vive actualmente, y es en Denver, en Colorado, donde ella comenzó sus estudios de derecho, los cuales eh, después por varias circunstancias los dejó y eh, se volcó a las letras. Eh, después de tres años de esfuerzo, presenta su primera novela, Carretera de Plata. La idea de esta novela surgió del documental Highway of Fears eh, y ella, como es un fan del true crime, en, eh, como un género narrativo, quedó impactada de la historia de esta que ocurría en una carretera de Canadá en Highway 60, 66. Uh, y a lo largo del cual eh, en esta carretera desaparecieron muchísimas mujeres durante un, un periodo de tiempo importante, eh, cerca de medio siglo. Ella estableció con estas ideas un vínculo con una carretera eh, en, en Suecia, en Riksbach eh, 95, y el resultado ha sido este. Este debut que batió récords de venta tanto en Suecia como en otras partes del mundo. En Suecia fue considerada la mejor obra publicada del 2018 y eh, recibió un galardón por la Academia Soja de Escritores de Novela Negra. Su más reciente trabajo en español es La Mujer de Odermark. Stina, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. It's, it's an honor and a pleasure to, to be here. I'm so excited. Uh, Stina, what are the inspiration engines uh, for writing? Oh, wow. I'm, I'm really one of those people who think that that curiosity is really better than ideas. Like, I'm very, very driven by, by my own curiosities, and it could be uh, curiosity, curiosities about kind of the human mind, uh, phenomena in the world. Like, I usually get my inspiration from like news articles, conversations with friends, movies, other artworks. Uh, there's something that sparks that curiosity and, and that kind of is uh, where it all starts and um, where the magic sort of happens. Um, yeah, I think curiosity is a great sort of engine and a great fuel for creativity. Hmm. What is the Uh, for you, the importance of the reality. For example, in your first novel, you you ins get get inspired with a with a documentary. Can you tell us something about that? Yes, I was um, very inspired by a documentary about this uh, highway in Canada uh, that's earned the the nickname Highway of Tears because a lot of uh, young women and girls have disappeared during this highway. Uh, some have been found murdered, others have never been found. Uh, and when I saw this documentary, I was deeply moved. And also seeing this sort of Canadian wilderness, uh, the pine forest, this beautiful nature, really sort of uh, reminded me of home, uh, which is northern Sweden where I grew up. And um, it kind of just made me think about, you know, what would happen if something like this was happening in Sweden where young women were disappearing. Um, and I also was very moved by the, uh, the grief and the despair uh, that the families felt uh, when they never, never knowing what happened to their loved ones, their, their daughters, their sisters. Um, so writing my first book, I was very sort of uh, curious about, you know, how do you move on? Can you ever move on when someone uh, is missing and you may never know? what happened to that person you know is there ever closure um so so that was kind of the spark that that fueled um my first book mm. this is just first book but in the second book uh, the woman of all the my pronunciation oh i'm sorry oh, this mark? oh yeah yeah that's mark <laughs> uh, it's it's the correct pronunciation all this mark 
Uh, yes, Ödesmark. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, Sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, in in the the the, the first novel, uh, you get inspired by a documentary. What happened with the woman of Ödesmark? With Ödesmark, I, I very much wanted to write about a person who kind of stayed, not just in the place that they were born, like in the same village that they were born, but also a person who actually stayed in their family home. Um, and, and never really became uh, an adult, never really gained independence. Um, and I think, you know, I, I left my home country at a, at a pretty early age. Uh, so I was always kind of fascinated about, you know, the people that end up staying. Um, so, so that was a big inspiration for her and, and kind of like, what is it that keeps her there with her father, who is kind of a, a monstrous character in many ways. Um, yeah, just kind of those chains that hold people back from uh, from going out into the world. Hmm. In Sweden, in Nordic countries, uh, there is a big tradition of crime uh, literature, crime novels. Uh, do you feel uh, part of, of that, of that kind of tradition? Uh, I grew up reading a lot of uh, Scandinavian uh, crime novels, uh, Scandinavian crime noir. Uh, so I definitely was sort of brought up in the tradition, uh, but I also feel like um, I, I don't feel quite at home there because I do uh, write maybe a little more literary. I, I tend to just kind of want to, um, I'm not super interested in the blood and the guts and the gore. I'm more interested in sort of the, the evil that happens perhaps within, within our homes and within our community and within our family. Um, you know, I think they say that most murders actually are committed by people that we know. Um, so, I'm, so I'm much more interested in sort of those um, more slow burn uh, dramas really than, than maybe the typical crime novel. Mm, the dark side of a people. Yes, very much so. I, I think, you know, I think we all have our, our demons and and uh, it's it's fascinating to sort of think about what what makes a person cross the line um, and, and commit um, crimes. Um, so, yeah, I find it very, very fascinating and um, I, I, I love the genre. I think it can be it can be so much. I think the there's so much to the genre and it's really grown even within Sweden. Um, you see a lot of different sort of crime novels coming out. Um, mm -hmm. So so it's exciting. The dark side of the people. And in the other hand, the dark side of the family, uh, all the secrets that the family has. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that I, I, I tend to write a lot about uh, bonds of family, brothers, uh, fathers and daughters and mothers and sons. And, and, and I really kind of get stuck on those blood relations because I think there's so much there. there there's so much that you know, we can all identify with. We all have the, those kind of struggles. You know, how do I liberate myself from, uh, from my parents and... Um, Maybe you feel like you're not really uh, part of your family. Maybe you feel kind of distanced from your family and, and all those kind of struggles that I think uh, we can all recognize uh, no matter where we are born or where we live. I think, I think family and, and those close relationships are something that uh, can connect us. What happened with the woods? I mean, when we are in the north of, uh, of Sweden or in Canada, in the north of the United States, there are a lot of uh, woods, uh, very nice landscapes, beautiful places, but uh, not just in your books, uh, it's a part of, uh, of the tradition in Sweden, in, 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 in noir uh, literature. Uh, what happened with the, with the beauty of, of the country, uh, what are the things, the bad things inside the beauty? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it's been very fun for me as a writer since I, I, I kind of love to, to describe the place and I really want the place to be its own character in my works. 
Like I want people to be able to feel and smell the, the forest and, and the place. And I think it's, um, I love Northern Sweden and I love the beauty and I feel very much safe and very much at home there. But I know that there's a lot of people who don't feel safe in the woods and that the woods can be a very sort of um, scary experience now when most of us live in, in urban areas. So I think you can play a lot with that beauty uh, and the isolation um, in, in ways that are very sort of exciting um, when you write a book. Um, I think I think Northern Sweden is, is a great sort of setting for all kinds of literature, really, because, yeah, it's it's kind of isolated. Um, it's beautiful, uh, but you can also sort of turn that beauty into um, somewhat of a haunting uh, place. Mm. In the Nordic countries, uh... You don't have a, a lot of, of people. Well, you you live right now on in, in the United States, but let me let me let me tell you something. Uh, for example, uh, Finland and Norway has uh, five million persons, uh, and Sweden, I think, uh, have uh, 10 millions. Well, the territory is very large, so people live uh, mostly in the south, uh, in the big cities, but many many people live. Uh, very far away, isolated, uh, in the loneliness. Uh, it's uh, it's um, yes, uh, it's more natural for you. But when I uh, read your book, uh, I feel myself uh, very isolated, even in yeah. the city. The the thing <laughs> is, uh, when you write uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, you are speaking about the fear inside the people and, and, and all the loneliness in the world, isn't it? Yes, I, I've noticed it's not something that I do consciously, but I, I tend to um, often come back to loneliness. And I think that's something that, sadly, I think that's something that really unites us all right now. I think loneliness is sort of this world struggle. I think a lot of us feel very, very alone, especially in this past year of the pandemic. And I think uh, we can all sort of connect uh, to that mm. loneliness. And, and when we see it in literature, I think we kind of feel less alone in a way. Um, but when it comes to Northern Sweden and the setting, I, I feel like that, I think a lot of people also kind of long for um, for nature and kind of going back to, to the simpler life, the beauty. A lot of us live in the cities and we kind of miss that. Uh, so I, I try to sort of play with both this longing for uh, maybe a little more isolation, but also sort of play with that, with that fear um, and that loneliness. Uh, so I think it's very rich and I think that's why it's, it's been so fun to go back to my roots and, and write sort of these suspense stories there because it's so rich and uh, varied. Mm. And at the, um, and at the same time, you know, oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but at the same time, I think it's something that even though maybe a lot of people have never been to northern Sweden, I think those um, the loneliness and the isolation is something that anyone can really relate to. Uh, and that's that's a very cool experience when I hear from readers. Um, and what and what happened about the weather? Uh, the wind, the night, the snow, uh, it's not the isolation of the landscape. It's, it's, there is something in the air too. Yes, for sure. I, I've noticed that I play a lot with sort of the forces of nature um, to reflect sort of the inner struggles that go on inside the characters. Um, like in my first novel, this father who's searching for his daughter, um, those very light um, summer nights that we see in northern Sweden where the sun never really sets. Um, and there's this, you know, everything's growing, all the animals are having their babies, the birds are singing all night. It kind of becomes this place of madness um, in the summer in the Swedish north. Everything has to happen so fast. Um, and, and it's a very, very sort of, it's hard to sleep because it's so light. Um, and, and my main character searching for his daughter, I think he's very much sort of affected by the physical environment. Um, there's almost a madness to the Swedish summer that sort of fuels his own madness. 
because he's he's on the verge of going crazy there when he's he's driving all night long searching uh, for his daughter. Um, so, so I often think that the the physical environment sort of adds to uh, to what's going on inside these people. Hmm. Uh, I think that it's a, 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 a Nordic tradition uh, in the first uh, moment of the great literature of, of the north of Europe. Uh, maybe Knut Hansum, uh, maybe uh, um, uh, Laxness in from Iceland. Uh, the isolation and the weather. It's very important to to understand uh, life. There is no more difficult uh, in that that live in in, in the Great North. Mm. How how do you uh, take this uh, that experience of, of your childness to create something to the rest of the world? Yeah, I mean, I I kind of think of my first book especially as a sort of love letter to my uh, to my roots. I really wanted to capture that uh, that resilience and, and and that kind of harshness to it. Um, I think the, the northern Swedish people are very, very uh, strong. Um, they, there's not a lot of things that really face them when it comes to weather. Uh, you know, here I, I live in the United States now and, and people need their air conditioners. They need their, their comfortable sort of homes. And, and in Sweden, we're, you know, we'll have lunch outside in summer. And we don't care about the flies and the mosquitoes, but we're used to it. Uh, so, so I think the Swedish people, especially in the north, are very sort of resilient and, and they don't complain a lot. They kind of are very self-sufficient. They get it done. Um, they live off the land. They still are very close to nature and, and in that way can take care of themselves. Uh, and I really kind of wanted that to shine through in my book because um, I think that's getting pretty unique now in, in our modern world i think we're all getting so comfortable and uh we, we try to fight the elements yeah. best we can and um <laughs> we're becoming a little bit weak to be honest i feel it happening mm. to myself now and i go back to sweden and i'm not used to um, the things that i took that was everyday life back then now i'm like wow you know this this is it's dark it's um it's cold you know um, so, so I think it's it's a place that makes people very strong, and yeah, it's very it's a very good place to sort of capture that human resilience, and uh, and and it makes for great characters um, when it mm. comes to a suspense novel. Mm. About her human resilience, uh, as a writer, uh, what is the effect of the pandemic for you? I've been so lucky. I say that every day because I'm, I was already so used to sort of sitting alone in my little room writing. So, so I wasn't as affected by, you know, having to maybe work from home and not seeing people. And uh, so the everyday life, I, I was, I was lucky in that way. But having my whole family back in Sweden um, has has been hard. You know, not being able to uh, to travel and and see them and the, the, the worry that someone's gonna get very sick when they're very far away. Um, I think we're all feeling much more vulnerable now than we ever did. Um, and, and the things that I took for granted, like, oh, I can travel home any, any day. Um, now it's, it's all kind of um, been shattered. And, and I think we're all kind of, uh, we feel more vulnerable now than, than ever. Mm. Uh, that do you think that mm, people people can change uh, the vision of the world because of the pandemic? Yes, I think so. Um, and I think maybe especially in literature, I think that you know, literature is that place where we can we can always see that we're not alone in, in literature. 
Uh, and I think in life, we often sort of shy away from, from feelings of fear and, and anxiety, and we, we try to run from it. Uh, but literature sort of allows us to experience all those emotions in a pretty safe way. So I think literature can definitely um, sort of become therapeutic in times like this. Um, yeah. So you think that uh, literature uh, can save us from reality? I do. I, I think that I think it allows us to actually see reality better. Um, you know, like I said, fiction sort of we realize that whatever we're going through, what, whatever we've been through in our lives, there's always someone who's been there before. And of all the arts, literature is really uh, the one art where we get into someone else's head. You know, we actually get to see that, you know, someone else has been thinking our thoughts and and someone else, you know, wonders about these things. And um, I think it's, you know, it, it's really the the great way to feel like like you're not that unique, but you're also not alone. Um, so I definitely think that fiction can be, you know, what we really need to, to deal with reality in a sense. Mm -hmm. um fiction uh it's uh the way that we can speak more clearly about uh, reality what are the things that you really want to say through your your literature oh wow <laughs> that's a hard question I'm, I'm a very intuitive writer so i often surprise myself i don't really sit down and, and think to myself oh i'm gonna write a book about these themes. Rather, the, the themes sort of reveal themselves to me as I go along. Uh, and I'm often very surprised at the end of, of a rough draft, um, like, oh, this, this is really a book about grief, or this is a book about loneliness. Um, so I don't really set out to do specific things, but then I'm always very happy when I sort of see what, what came out. And I also think the intuitiveness keeps me a little more honest uh, when I don't try to force a theme in there, but rather let them uh, reveal themselves as, the, as they come along in a more organic way. Um, so, um, so far I've noticed that, that my books deal a lot with, with loneliness. Um, hmm. And I don't know what that says about me, but... <laughs> <laughs> about, about your last novel in Spanish, The Woman of Odermack, Odersmack, um, Yes, it could be a noir novel, but it's not yet. Uh, there is a cop, but there is not an investigation. It's mm -hmm. something more like a, a, a country novel. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe it's more realist, realistic because uh, uh, the, the policeman uh, not always works like in the novels, in the noir novels. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you try to define that kind of work that you did between a countryside novel with a noir uh, novel ele elements? Um, how is the mixture and what is the frontier in the middle of that? Yeah, I, I think I was very inspired by uh, country noir, you know, it's a pretty strong tradition here in the US, um, but also sort of great family dramas like, you know, Ingmar, Ingmar Bergman's uh, sort of family dramas. I, to me, um, the people are usually the mystery and I really like to sort of get under their skin and, and let my characters sort of carry the suspense. Uh, I'm not super interested in, in writing like a police procedural. Um, so, so I really had fun with the cop being more like a small town rural cop. Uh, he's almost friends with everybody, so he can sort of just show up and, and have more of a, like a human meeting with these people. Um, like one of the guys who, who's been a criminal for most of his life, Liam, uh, this cop has known him since he was a child. So there's sort of this, this rural element. So I would say that it, it does fit into country noir. Uh, but it could also maybe just be more of a uh, dark sort of family drama. 
Um, mm. and, and I find it really, really fun to sort of play around with, with genres and, and, and to, to feel free in what I do. And, um, yeah. Mm -mm. You uh, left uh, Sweden very young, uh, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. Do you think that through literature can can we see some kind of identity, in your case, uh, a Sweden identity? Yes, I think that especially my first book was very much a, a way for me to sort of um, reclaim my roots and, and, and go back there. And, and I think the place where we grow up, like, you know, our, our place of origin, where we learn our language and, and we learn about the world. And, and I think that place always sort of live within us and it never really leaves us. Um, so, so it was kind of natural for me to, to try to reclaim that. And also whenever you leave your country, there's always this immense feeling of loss. Like there's always a heartbreak, even though I came here, I wasn't, you know, um, running from a war, it, you know, it was a voluntary decision, but there's still this sort of heartbreak and, and this feeling of loss. Um, and I think through my writing, I can sort of reclaim my, my Swedish identity. Um, and I can also be there whenever I want to, uh, through my writing, I can be anywhere. And that's really mm. the beauty of it. I know that the Scandinavian countries has uh, many things uh, in common, uh, but do you think that, that um, you have some kind of European identity? Oh, yes, I do. I, I kind of struggle with the feeling of not belonging really anywhere. I often feel like I'm too European for the U.S. And I'm, when I go back home, I feel like I'm too Americanized now. Uh, so I, I, I definitely live with sort of dual identities. And I'm very much sort of a chameleon. Um, I always try to just fit in wherever I go. Um, uh, but, but yeah, it's a challenge. And I think it's it's something that's great for my writing because I do get to see, I see Sweden now much clearer than I did when I actually lived there. Um, and at the same time, I've gained this 16 years of, of living in America. Um, so it's hard, but I also think it's, it's a great place to be for, for a writer to get these mm. perspectives. Sweden has uh, a, a very important uh, moment in the history of Europe. Uh, I remember, for example, uh, many European people, uh, even people from the United States, uh, go there in the middle of the uh, Second World War. Mm, was a very important country in that moment. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think about uh, frontiers, migrations, uh, limits, uh, countries? Uh, uh, just, ju just say, um, right now you have a perspective, the distance maybe give us a perspective, a, a different perspective. Right now, how do you see your country? How do you see Europe? Um, it's changed a lot. Like Sweden is not the, the place that I grew up. It's it's actually gotten a little more violent. Um, so, so yeah, I, I feel distance from it. I, I kind of feel like that it's not the country that I knew when I was growing up. Um, and when it comes to the whole thing with borders, um, I really hope and wish that we can be more open uh, and that we can actually cross more borders and that we can travel more and that it shouldn't be so hard to immigrate and emigrate. Um, I know we say that that we're kind of citizens of the world now, thanks to the internet and, and people are traveling a lot, but I still think there's a lot of barriers. Um, and I think the more people that leave the place that they come from, the better in a sense, uh, even if you end up returning, but just getting that perspective of, of another country. I mean, to me, that's been um, a treasure. Uh, and I hope I can bring my husband back to Europe so that he can get that experience. I think 
you know, actually being in other countries and, and seeing how, how similar we all are. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very sort of critical uh, about borders and, and I think we're, we should make it easier and not harder um, mm. to move across the world. And what about uh, the female perspective? I mean, um, in Sweden, uh, you have many years, from many years, sexual education, uh, sexual liberty, uh, equality uh, uh, between the men and women. Uh, and now the, this is one in our time. Um, how do you see in that way uh, your country, because in your novels, you have a female uh, characters. They are weak and they are strong, not powerful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how, how, how we see it in the movies, uh, mm -hmm. strong inside, weak inside, uh, uh, with love inside, with fears inside. Mm -hmm. How do you speak about uh, woman characters? in this moment of our time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think women are, obviously, w w the doors have been open much more than they've ever been for all of us. But but the place I come from, Northern Sweden, is, has had very strong women for, for a long time. And, and when I look at my own family, I, I feel like, you know, the strongest people were really the women. You know, they got so much done and they, um, they, they were incredibly strong. I just lost my grandmother last year, and, and I think she was one of the strongest people I know. Um, so I, I really come from, from a place of strong women, and, and the women take place, and the women sort of are very much part of uh, the decision-making and part of the home, and they, they work. And um, so I, I think I was lucky in that, not just that I, you know, that Sweden is very uh, forward when it comes to, to women's rights, but... Um, also, I came from a family with with very strong women. Um, so, so I think I hope that reflects the uh, the women in my books um, that they are uh, they're sort of um, very much independent. I feel like Liv in you know, Eldest Mike is is very much sort of uh, she doesn't really want to rely on a man to uh, to get her own life. She wants to do it on her own. Um, and uh, yeah. Like human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, just like a man would, would try to go out into the world um, and, and make a life for himself, so, so does she. Um, so I don't really see those limitations anymore for women. I think, I think they can do uh, pretty much whatever, whatever they want to. It, it may still be harder, but I think, um, those doors, those, those doors are open and it's only going to get better. Mm. Can literature uh, lead us uh, to cross bridges, the bridges of the differences? Oh, absolutely. I, I think uh, reading books in translation and I, I love to read books from, from all parts of the world. Uh, and I think the, the best thing really is um, to realize how similar we all really are um, and, and how much our struggles are the same um, even though you know the the societal issues and, and some of the surrounding issues are are very different we still sort of struggle with the same things you know it's it's family it's love it's uh, finding finding our career finding our lives um so i, so I feel like it really sort of uh bridges the gap in a way that I don't know if any other art really can. Uh, this uh, this fair, the, the, the Festival de las Letras Europeas, uh, uh, came from a part. It's a part of a field in Guadalajara, but the European uh, Union Embassy in Mexico. Um, so, do you think that literature can give us uh, a, a, a bridge? to the other countries, to the other languages, to the another kind of, of, of life? Yes, I mean, I think it's really, I mean, it's, it's a way of traveling. I think it allows us to, to travel. 
Um, I just read uh, Mexican author Fernanda Melcor recently. And, and I mean, I, I really think that, you know, we get to see other cultures that we may never be able to visit. Um, and we get to sort of learn about, you know, other ways of living, but also recognize that, that we are much more similar than, than we may think. And I think it can really take down a lot of barriers and a lot of sort of fears uh, that we may have against um, other people. You know, I think reading is, is really the way we, we can connect uh, with other, other countries, other cultures, other genders, um, people that have lived completely different lives from our own, uh, but they allow us to sort of see that experience and, and live it with them. And um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a meeting place and, and definitely a bridge. Mm. You said a, a few moments uh, uh, that that you like uh, Bergman, Ingmar Bergman, uh, family dramas. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the uh, what what are the things that you get inspired? Oh wow! Well, I I think that those things that are universal and, and sort of. Um, a lot of his works are still so relevant today. I mean, they just did a remake of, of scenes from a marriage. And I think those things that can live for decades and still sort of connect with us today uh, are the true masterpieces. Uh, and when it comes to those things like marriage, family, uh, parent, child relationships, um, uh, they're just so universal to us all. And I think that's why they will always remain interesting um, and and great sort of topics for, for literature. Mm. Uh, the name of your character in The Woman of Bodesmack is Liv. Mm -hmm. It's because Liv Ullman? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, maybe it is. I, I, I just kind of liked the fact that uh, Liv also means um, life in, in Swedish. Uh, so, so I kind of, you know, her whole sort of struggle is, is to gain her own life. Um, so, so I think it was more that than an ode to uh, Ingmar Bergman, but you never know. I mean, I'm very, I do a lot of subconscious things. So things sneak in there without me knowing why or how. So, so it's possible that that played a role too. Mm. And, and my last question, um, right now, uh, we know just book, two books here in, 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 in Mexico and Spanish. Um, what are the things that you, uh, mm, that you have in your mind, maybe for a new story, a new novel, new book? I'm working on something new and, and that this time I really sort of want to combine my two worlds. Um, so, so what I'm working on now takes place both in my uh, hometown in Sweden and uh, over here in the United States. So it's, it's sort of trying to combine and weave this tale um, using my two, my two worlds. Because I've been here now for, for 16 years uh, in the US, most of my adult life. So I feel like it's, it's time to sort of try to combine the two. and. and and see where that goes. Hmm. Uh, do, do you have some some uh, plan to came to Mexico in, in the next moments, next months? Oh, I would love to. I was when I first was invited to this festival. I was like, oh, I hope I get to go because I've never been to Mexico. I'd love to go. I am super fascinated with Mexico City. Me and my husband talk about it all the time. That that's the place we need to visit. So. Yeah, I, I hope so. I'd love to visit. Well, as I hope that the pandemic, pandemia, let us uh, speak. Uh, maybe here, maybe there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Stina. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be mm -hmm. here.
Muchas gracias por acompañarnos en esta conversación con Estina Jackson en el marco del de décimo primer Festival de las Letras Europeas, que forma parte de las actividades de la Feria Internacional del Libro de Guadalajara en su trigésima quinta edición. Estén muy pendientes de otros momentos, otros escritores que estarán en presencia virtual y también eh, los que eh, se den cita en el marco de la Feria del Libro allí en la ciudad de Guadalajara. Hasta pronto.